Hello everyone, this is Dr. Webb. The focus of this video is going to be the chain rule. Um, and so the chain rule for multivariable functions, this is really talking about compositions of multivariable functions. Um, but, but really for multivariable functions, this, this really is talking about change of variables. And there's, there's lots of different ways that this can take place in, in multivariable context. Um, and so one thing that can happen is we can start off say with a function of two variables, f of x, y. And then for x, for x and y, we could take some curve on the x and y plane, you know, denoted by this, this parameterized vector function r of t, and then we can plug these component functions in for x and y into f of x. Right? And so at the end of the day, after this composition, this, this becomes a function of only t. Um, so geometrically, what's going on here? Well, so this is f of x is drawing out some surface on the... Uh, in three space, the R of T is drawing out some curve on the XY plane. And so when we plug the coordinates of this curve into the function, really what we're getting is we're getting sort of this slice So I'm writing f of r of t, but really this is plugging in x of t for x and y of t for y. Really what we're getting is the slice of the function happening above the curve, right? And so it's, we're taking this from this two variable surface and we're just looking at a one dimensional slice of it um, going along the curve down below. So this is one possible thing that can happen. And so maybe perhaps more traditionally, we think of um, change of variables. Well, we want to change this into some other variables, u and v. And so how do we do this change? Well, x is going to equal some function of u and v. So we'll call that x of u and v. y is going to get replaced with some function y of u and v. And so we get some new function, put a little tilde hat on it, that's now in terms of u and v, right? And so this is, we're starting off with things in terms of x and y. x is equal to some function in terms of u and v. y is equal to some function of u and v. We plug those in, replacing x and y, and we get some new function that's just in terms of u and v. Um, and there's nothing special about two variables here. Um, you could have x and y could get replaced with u, v, and w. Um, you could have x, y, and z getting replaced by u and v. Um, there's really no, no limit, no restrictions on the number of variables that can be involved here. Um, but once you kind of understand what's happening from two variables x and y into another two variables u and v, it's, it's pretty easy to generalize to what's happening uh, more often. So let's, let's go back and let's start with this, this, starting off with f of x, y, and then putting it back in terms of t. Okay. And so, uh, so let's just do this straight through as an example. Uh, so for f of x, y equals x squared plus 3xy minus y squared. And our change of variables are going to be uh, x is going to get replaced with cosine of t. Sine is going to get replaced with sine of t. Right? And so, so x connected to cosine, y connected to sine. This should tell you that, that really what we're doing is we're looking at what happens to this function over the unit circle on the xy plane. Um, and then what we want to do is find what the derivative in terms of t is after we make this, after we plug these functions in. 
And we're going to do this just by plugging it in. Then we'll have a one variable function in terms of t. And then we're going to just take the derivative from there and see what happens. Okay, so if I plug cosine in for t, uh, sine in for y, what do we end up with? Well, x squared becomes cosine squared plus 3x becomes cosine, y becomes sine, minus y squared is sine squared t. Okay, so there's our function. Now, if you notice, it's only in terms of t now. And so when we take the derivative of this, you can notice in the problem we use the traditional calc 1, uh, hard d over dt, not this partial d, regular d over regular dt. And it's because now we really just have a, a calc 1, one variable function. And so this is, this is the derivative from calc 1. And so when we do d, d dt of this... Uh, what do we get? Well, so it's just taking the derivative all the way through. Cosine squared is going to be 2 cosine t, and then I get a minus sine t, and then I have to use the product rule on 3 cosine t sine t. So that's going to be 3 minus sine squared plus 3 cosine squared t, and then at the end we have minus 2 sine t cosine t. Okay, and so this is what we get just by plugging it in and differentiating. It's, it's really not, not that difficult a problem um, going through. Okay, um, but if you look at this, how does this relate to the, if we think back to uh, f of xy to its partials, right? So what if we took the partials of, of f of f here? So the partial in terms of x would be 2x plus 3y. And the partial in terms of y would be 3x minus 2y. Do we see those kind of popping up anywhere here? Well, I've got kind of a 2 cosine t. That's sort of my 2x there. And then what's it getting multiplied by? Well, minus sine t. Well, minus sine t, where did that come from? Well, it came from the derivative of cosine, and so this is kind of like times x prime, okay? 3y, so 3y, y is sine, so I've got a 3 and 1 sine there, and then it's getting multiplied by an x prime again, so I can think about this as being coming from 3y times x prime. Then for 3x, well, I see I have 3 and a cosine there, and then it's getting multiplied by another cosine, and that cosine is really coming from the derivative of sine there. And so I can think about this as being 3x times y prime. And then lastly, this minus 2 sine cosine t, uh, minus 2 sine t cosine t, well, that's like the 2y, again, or minus 2y. Times y prime. And so you kind of see you have these partials popping up, but they're getting multiplied by 
the, the partial in terms of x is getting multiplied by the derivative of the change of variables for x. And the partial in terms of y is getting multiplied by y prime, so the derivative of the change of variables for y. Okay, and so does that always And the answer is yes. So another way to think about the change of variables is the way, what it's always going to turn out to be, and so I've written it sort of in two forms here. Um, the first form, this is really sort of more how you actually do it, how you actually think about it. And so if you're taking the derivative of, of x of t and y of t plugged into the function, well, you've got, same as we saw before, the partial in terms of x times the derivative of the change of variables for x plus the partial in terms of y times the derivative for the change of variables in terms of y. And the shorthand for this is to get df dt, you take the partial of f in terms of x times dx dt plus the partial of f in terms of y times dy dt. And so notice that for when we're taking the, the, the derivatives of f, f is, is inherently a multivariable function, and so it has partial derivatives, whereas the x of t and y of t, these are really one variable functions, and so this has sort of the calc 1 notation, dx dt, dy dt. And at the end, after we make the change of variables, f then is just a function of one variable t. And so when we take its derivative in terms of t, it's df dt. Okay, so let's <coughs> go through and think about this problem uh, same as, as we just saw um, using these formulas, using the chain rule, right? And so um, the idea here is that we're going to have f of x times x prime of t. And of course, we have to plug in the, the functions in there, plus f of y times y prime of t. Okay, so f of x, the partial in terms of x, as we saw before, is 2x plus 3y. And so then when we plug in the change of variables, so fx of cosine t sine of t is going to be 2 cosine t plus 3 sine t. Um, we do the partial in terms of y. So this is 3x minus 2y. And so then we plug in the change of variables. And we're going to get 3 cosine t minus 2 sine t. And so then at the end, to get df dt, well, it's going to be f of xy cosine t sine t. And so 2 cosine t plus 3 sine t. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the change of variables for x. So the derivative of cosine is minus sine t plus the partial in terms of y with the change of variables plugged in, 3 cosine t minus 2 sine t, and then multiplied by the derivative of the change of variables for y. So y prime, which is going to be derivative of sine is cosine. And so this is the, the exact same thing we got before, it's just organized a little bit differently. Um, but you end up with the same thing. Um, so, you know, I think in terms of, of actually using the formula, sometimes the formula is, is convenient, and we'll see at uh, some point in the future that we'll, we'll use it because it's nice at times. Um, but often, if you're just you're kind of practically doing this, often it makes just as much sense just to plug in the change of variables at the beginning and then just take the derivative of t all at once. So it's kind of up to personal preference. Okay, so what about if we're doing uh, 
we're doing changing x and y into u and v. So this is two variables to two variables change. Okay, and so let's do the same thing we did before. We're going to plug everything in in terms of u and v, and then uh, and then take the derivatives from there and see what we get. And so hopefully we have enough space here. So in for x, we're plugging in e u plus v. In for y, we're plugging in v times sine of u. And so 2x cubed is going to turn into 2e to the u plus v. If I cube it, that's the same thing as multiplying the exponent by 3. Minus 5e to the u plus v squared times y, y is times v sine of u, and then last but not least I have plus y squared, which is going to give me v squared sine squared u. Okay, and let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. So u plus v times 3. Let's rewrite that as 3u plus 3v. Three u plus three v, and same thing, uh, u plus v times two. Let's write that as two u plus two v. Okay, so now let's start taking some partials. So the partial in terms of u, we've got lots of u's in here. Okay, so. First one, I've got, first term is 2 e to the 3u plus 3v, and so 2 is a constant, so it's going to carry over, times e to the 3u plus 3v, so because the derivative of e to something is still e to something, um, so, but then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and so the derivative of the inside in terms of u is going to be, give me a 3, and then I have minus, so we're doing the derivative in terms of u here. So I can pull out a 5v, and then it's e to the 2u plus 2v times sine of u. So product rule on that is going to give me e to the 2u plus 2v, and then derivative from the inside is going to give me a 2 times sine of u plus e to the 2u plus 2v times the derivative of sine is cosine u. And then last but not least, so we're doing the partial in terms of u, so v squared is a constant, and then derivative of sine squared u is going to give me a 2 sine u cosine u. And then what about the partial for v? <clears throat> well, it's going to be same basic idea. So beginning, I'm going to get 2 e to the 3u plus 3v, and then the derivative of the inside in terms of v. Still going to spit out a 3. And then minus. So now I'm doing... This middle term, 5 times e to the 2u plus 2v times v times sine u. Now I'm taking the partial, excuse me, in terms of v. And so I can pull out now the 5 sine u. And then I'll have 2e to the 2u plus 2v. So this 2 is coming from now the partial of 2v. Uh, times v plus e to the 2u plus 2v, and then the derivative of v is just 1. And then for the final term, we're taking the partial in terms of v, so it's going to be 2v times sine squared u. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so those are two partials, FU and FV. Um, is there another way that we could have done this, sort of similar to, to what it was before? Uh, yes, there is, and you can kind of see this. Um, well, let's just see the formula. I don't want to make this any more messy than it already is. Okay, and so the formula is the same, same basic idea. Um, if you're doing the partial in terms of u, uh, well, it's like you're treating v to be a constant. And so then what you end up with is, is looks like the same thing you have for the one variable, except now you have partials for x and parcels for y instead of the, the uh, regular derivatives for them. Um, but it's the same basic idea. So after the change of variables, the partial in terms of u is going to be the partial of f in terms of x times the partial of x in terms of u. So that's coming from the change of variables plus the partial of f in terms of y times coming from the change of variables, the partial of y in terms of u. And the same thing for dv. Okay. So, so how does this apply to, to doing the problem? So if we're going to use the chain rule for this, well, so let's start off getting the partials for x and the partials for y. So the partial in terms of x is 6x squared minus uh, 5 times 2, so that's going to be, let's save space, so this is going to be 10xy, and then the y squared goes away. And so when we rewrite this in terms of the change of variables, this is going to be 6e to the 2u plus 2v minus 10e to the u plus v uh, times y is v sine u, okay, and then the partial in terms of y is going to be 2x cubed goes to 0, and then I have minus 5x squared plus 2y, and so this is going to be minus 5e to the 2u plus 2v uh, plus 2 times v, 2 times y would be 2v sine u. So those are our partials in terms of x and y. Um, if I do dx du, uh, so let's do these in red, dx du, it's going to be, I'm taking the partial of uh, u plus v in terms of e to the u plus v in terms of u. It's going to give me just back e to the u plus v. Right, the inside u plus v partial of that in terms of u is just 1. Partial of uh, y in terms of u. So the partial of y in terms of u is going to be v cosine u. And then let's do the partial of y of x in terms of v. And that's just going to be e to the u plus v. And the partial of y in terms of v is just going to be sine of u. And so putting this together, if I want to do df du, well, so that's, that would be fx. So fx is in blue, so let's do that. So it would be 6e to the 2u plus 2v minus 10eu plus v v sine u, all of that multiplied by dx du, 
e to the u plus v plus the partial of y. So that's minus 5e to the u plus 2v plus 2v sine u times uh, dy du. So dy du is v cosine u. Okay, and so this is this 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 is exactly the same as what we got before, um, but it's organized a bit differently. Um, the parentheses are in different places, and things are organized the same way, or organized a different way. But it's going to be exactly the same. Um, and you can do the exact same thing at this point. Doing the exact same thing for dfdv is you just plug it in before, right? So it, again, we would have our partial in terms of x, but now we'd use our partial of x in terms of v would go in there. And then we'd add on, same as before, f partial in terms of y, but now we'd use dy dv partial y in terms of v to go in there. And so we'd get something quite similar. Okay, so how do you do this, the chain rule in general? Well, it, it's going to follow the exact same pattern. And so if you started off with um, n variables, and so we're calling them x1 through xn, and you wanted, you're changing the function so that it was now in terms of m variables, and those variables are u1, u2, da, 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 um, and you wanted to know what was the partial of f in terms of uh, ui, well, it would just be the sum, expanding this out of, of the partial of f in terms of x1, and then you have to multiply x1 times the partial of ui. Um, and then it's the partial of f in terms of, of x2 times uh, x2 times the partial of ui, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through, all the way down to the nth one. So the, the number of terms here are coming from you're going to have n terms, and that's coming from the number of variables that you started off with. Um, but then there would be m different partials you could take of your new f. And so those m partials are, are coming from the new uh, m variables. And so sometimes uh, if, if you know some linear algebra, if you don't know linear algebra, you can um, kind of ignore this. Um, but oftentimes, um, in, in math, uh, something like this, it's, it's actually easiest to represent as, um, it's, a, it's easiest to represent in terms of matrices, and there's actually a couple different ways uh, to do this. Um, and so this change of variables right here, it, there is sort of a natural matrix you can make out of it, where... The entries are, so the, my matrix would be, so this would be dx1, du1, and then I would make these, these would go down in terms of the x's, so the, the column would go through the change in x's, du1, dxn, u1 and going the other way across my uh, x values would stay the same so the x variables would stay the same but now my u's would change so the last one here would be partial of x1 in terms of u m And you could go down like this the other way. Uh, and so this would this last entry down here would be partial in terms of Xn, in terms of the partial of U M. Um, so this one would be Xn U2. This one would be 
x2 mu m. And so you can kind of see that in the columns, the u's match. And in the rows, the numbers of the x's match. Okay, and so at the end, this is this has n row n columns and m rows. Okay, so you have an n column by m row matrix. And so how would you get this partial here? Well, then you would take uh, you would take uh, a row vector that was df dx1, df dx2, df uh, dxn. And so then when you multiplied this row vector on the left to the matrix on the right, um, this will give you the, um, uh, this will actually spit out a row vector, but now instead of df, instead of now the partial instead of f in terms of x, by using the chain rule, it's going to be the partials of f in terms of the u's. And so, and it's going to be now instead of being n long, now it is going to be m long. df d partial of f in terms of m. Okay, so you get row vector to row vector. Um, and so, in some sense, this, this matrix right here of all these partials, um, this matrix sort of represents the, the derivative of the change of variables. Um, and we will see this again when uh, we talk about change of variables for integrals later on at the end of the course. Um, so, um, you know, really the, the, the point of this is if, if you know some linear algebra and you're interested in this, this is sort of the, the deep down way of, of thinking about it. Um, but, you know, you don't have to think about it that way. That is all I have for you for this video. I will see you again.